screaming, shouting, chair smashing, <laughs> crying. <laughs> oh, you got that. Compared to Western fans, Japanese gamers went absolutely nuts. <laughs> when the Dragon Quest hero character was unveiled for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, but why exactly is this such a big deal to them? It was honestly a real pleasure to see the really genuine excitement from the Smash community in relation to various announcements at E3, but more than anything, I think what takes the cake was the way Japanese fans reacted to the announcement of the new hero character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It was an absolutely wild reaction. <laughs> Japanese gamers simply could not contain their excitement at this character reveal. <laughs> They've been waiting decades to have a Dragon Quest Smash character, and finally, Nintendo has delivered. Now, to be honest, I think that the reaction from the Western Smash community overall was fairly lukewarm. I mean, despite the excitement at a few different gatherings where various people got together and went totally ape over the Nintendo Direct announcements, there were a lot of comments floating around kind of like this. Sorry, but this was the least hype I've ever been for a character reveal. And that's totally fine. What's the point in pretending you're hyped for something you aren't? But the real question here is why is there such a huge difference between the reaction of Western fans and Japanese fans? Obviously Dragon Quest is a lot more popular in Japan, but why? Why isn't it popular in the West? Why do Japanese consumers love this game so much? So we're going to talk about some specific reasons why Dragon Quest is so popular in Japan, but first, I thought it'd be pretty fun if we started off by rolling out a few of the reactions from Japanese YouTubers who tuned into the Nintendo Direct with translations to kind of set the stage for the discussion, and then we're going to jump in and talk about why Dragon Quest is such a big deal here. So enjoy these epic reactions and stick around for the discussion. Here we go. これ誰だ?パークバリのダオジ様かな?誰かな?嘘でしょ?来るのか?嘘だろ?俺多分なんかいや嬉しすぎたよこれ。来るのかあいつが。本当に来るの?来るのか?ちょっと待って、ちょっ
。本当にやばい。えー、こんなんさ、本当にふざけてんのやばくねやばい。いや、先生。よっしゃ。おぉはははしかっ<笑>ああ楽しいありがとうありがとう桜井さん<笑>ああよかったーかっけえ先生バレるじゃんこれやばいこれだ何ですかこれだわうう<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> So, I hope you guys enjoyed those videos. What can be said about these intense reactions? They were pretty wild. But now, it is time to jump into the why of why they were so wild. Why did Japanese gamers react with such excitement compared to Western gamers? Or perhaps a better way of phrasing it is why is Dragon Quest so important to Japanese gamers? And how has it been so consistently popular for the last 30 years? In my opinion, there are a few reasons. Firstly, Dragon Quest 1 was the very first absolute smash hit console RPG in Japan. Some might even call it the proper granddaddy of console RPGs, due to the influence it would have on the Japanese RPG market and by extension the broader worldwide RPG market at the time. Back in 1986, it made a name for itself when there really wasn't anything like it on the Japanese market. Of course, the game drew a lot of influence from RPGs like Ultima and Wizardry, but the way that Dragon Quest Took these RPG concepts and simplified them into something that was really digestible and paired with these really nice anime aesthetics, thanks to the wonderful art of Akira Toriyama, and at the same time built a world that had a really nice. Good feel to it. This really resonated with people. The game didn't catch on right away, but a few Shonen Jump articles and a bit of word of mouth later, and it soon became a really hot commodity here in Japan. The next year, DQ2 came out. The following year, DQ3 came out. In 1990, DQ4 came out. It just kept rolling on and building off that momentum and got such a strong hold on the RPG genre in Japan. And every main series game has basically crushed through millions of units sold in Japan. Japan, which is pretty impressive. On the other hand, the series' success story has never really been replicated outside of Japan, partially due to the really ridiculously spotty localizations, which, you know, sometimes after a game was released in Japan, it wouldn't come out in North America till like two or three years after. And some games like Dragon Quest V and VI didn't come out in North America until a decade or more after. The series just never had a chance to generate true momentum overseas, and there are probably some other reasons that contribute to this. Let me know in the comments if you want me to dig into those. Anyways, as far as Japan goes, that first mover advantage, the early popularity it generated, and the word of mouth that has built up and built up and built up over years has really entrenched the series' reputation among gamers. And pretty much anyone that the series has hooked over the years has really fond memories of the games. And part of the beauty of Dragon Quest is that no matter how long of a break you take, From the series, if you come back in a few entries later, it always has this kind of familiar Dragon Quest feel to it. All along the way, the games have maintained this kind of unique flavor and a really consistent feel. On the note of that consistency, I think that the nostalgia that a lot of people who grew up with the series have. Combined with the familiarity of games in the series, even the newer ones, they feel so. Familiar to anyone who's played a Dragon Quest game since one onwards. I think this combination is something that is another big strength of the series and really contributes to its staying power here in Japan. It reminds me quite a bit of Pokemon in that way. A combination of nostalgia and also familiarity with the game mechanics that never really radically change on you. So it's always like you can not play a Pokemon game for like 10 years and come right back into the series and feel super comfortable with it. DQ is like that, I think. And so it is really almost like a Second home for a lot of Japanese players. It's like the feeling of going back to your parents' house after years of being abroad or something like that. As Ryutaro Ichimura, one of the Square Enix executive producers who works with the Dragon Quest series, as he phrased it in an Iwata Asks segment, like, I don't know, 10 years ago, he said, No matter how many times we make this game, there's always something unmistakably Dragon Quest like. Everyone says playing feels 
so comfortable. Whatever Dragon Quest game you play, there's always something familiar about the art style, the game mechanics. It's not like Final Fantasy where there are often really radical changes from one game to the next. With Dragon Quest, it's like you are always coming back to something you're familiar with and something that you have really fond memories of. And this kind of reminds me of when Dragon Quest IX was planned to be an action RPG and fans basically flipped out to the point where Square Enix went and actually changed it back into a turn-based RPG. To be honest, at that time I was really pissed off because I prefer action RPGs, but I realized that this really stable formula and the familiarity attached to it is probably a big part of the staying power of the Dragon Quest series in Japan. I think this consistency in the design is something that has really given it a lot of unshakable longevity and why so many people have become familiar with the series over the years. And this brings me to the last point I wanted to make is that the Dragon Quest experience is an experience that is widely shared among people here in Japan. So back in the same Iwata Asks that I mentioned earlier, Yuji Hori was actually asked what exactly makes Dragon Quest so appealing to Japanese players. And this is what he said. Since so many people play it, I get the feeling individuals enjoy using it as a communication tool. Ichimura then added, same here. I think they enjoy using it as something to talk about. It may be the same as some TV programs as well. A good topic that everyone has in common. I think this is a really great point. It's kind of like how people will talk about the latest episode of Game of Thrones or probably better references like Harry Potter books. If you bring up Harry Potter, it's probably a very good, safe, comfortable topic that a lot of people can get into. And even if they haven't read the books, they are probably aware of it to some extent and so they feel comfortable if people around them are talking about it. And even now, 30 years after the game's release, basically anyone you talk to in Japan is going to know what Dragon Quest is. It's a household name. Obviously not everyone is going to know about the game in depth, but pretty much anyone you talk to will know the basics of what it is and what a slime is. I've had basic conversations with some of my friends' moms about Dragon Quest. It really is a household name. But for gamers, or even people who don't play games these days but grew up with the Dragon Quest games, it is something really special. From my experience, I have talked to so many Japanese businessmen, many in their 40s and 50s, and many of them clients who you would not peg as gamers, and some of them have seemed a little bit sour when you'd first get to know them. But I've actually been able to bond very well with many of them after the topic of Dragon Quest somehow surfaced. There are a ton of people who have played these games. It's almost like it's a topic that's as safe and as familiar as the formula of the Dragon Quest games themselves. You bring it up and anyone who's had a connection with the games, their eyes just light up with passion and they're eager to talk about their experiences with the Dragon Quest series in the past. And if they're still gaming, then man, you've unlocked a mega topic to build a nice relationship around. People absolutely love this game series. And every time a new game comes out here in Japan, it's an opportunity to bring up all those old shining memories as well as to delve into a new experience together. It gives gamers a lot of common ground and at the same time an opportunity to revisit some really golden memories. It's an experience to be shared. As Yuji Hori puts it, after all, human beings love other human beings. They want to use video games as a means to interact, and Dragon Quest gives us lots of material to facilitate that. So I think that may be why it's popular. So in that way, Dragon Quest is almost like a kind of fabric that connects Japanese gamers. And this is part of the reason why we have seen such universal excitement for the new Dragon Quest hero character in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Dragon Quest was the first console RPG to make a really huge splash in Japan. It built up its popularity over the years with its familiar formula and basically entered the Japanese national cultural consciousness in a way that few other games have. And I get the sense that a lot of my Japanese friends who play video games really see Dragon Quest as a big part of the Japanese gamer identity. They take a lot of pride in it. It's something that fans feel they can always rally around. And at the core of it all, they are really great games and so it is a big pleasure to see Smash Bros finally include a Dragon Quest character. More than anything, it was a real pleasure to see the pleasure of Japanese gamers reacting to to this character announcement, man, there's nothing like seeing someone super genuinely excited about something. <laughs> We looked at a lot of video reactions in the early part of this video, but here is one tweet to sum things up. Dragon Quest's hero, Smash Bros. Sakurai-san, thank you so much. No matter how old I get, this incredible game is a game of dreams that has continued to thrill me ever since I was a kid. I am so happy 
I cannot wait until this is out. Dragon Quest has a very important place in the hearts of Japanese gamers, but how about you? Are you a Dragon Quest fan? If not, do you like any other JRPGs or RPGs? Please tell me about what you're into. Because if you thought this video was cool, it would be awesome if we could connect in the comments. And there is no shortage of cool topics to tackle in the Japanese games and anime universe. So if there's something you're really interested in that you want me to talk about or provide translations on, let me know. Until we talk again in the very near future, you might find one of these videos interesting, so check them out. Talk to you soon.